Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool. And I'm in the middle of working on a project um, I'm calling Maximum Minimalism. And what it is, is I want the lightest weight, fully functioning toolkit for a multi-week overlanding trip that I've got planned early in the summer. And one of the things I need to figure out is what set of tools essentially is the lightest because the biggest enemy, as far as I'm concerned, to overlanding is weight. And it's very easy to do just in case or might as well. I mean, if there's a particular socket I'm looking at, is there really anything that fits that on any of the vehicles I'll be with or uh, the one I'm driving? Um, and if the answer is no, then why am I bringing it? You know, and I'm not going to do the, well, in case I run into somebody on the trail or whatever. That's their problem, not my problem. I don't want to be bogged down by carrying tools for somebody else's vehicle. So I'm looking at some questions like only going with three eighths. Um, there's just a handful of small sockets that I might need, but I'm going to need some, uh, you know, heavier power, heavier twisting with uh, the larger sockets, so I should err on the 3 8 side and not supplement the quarter inch with some bigger sockets. Um, I'm also thinking of limiting out um, only the, the individual pieces that I might need. Um, as I mentioned over here, that's the same with e-torques, that's the same with, with hexes um, and with regular torques. So I'm gonna be picking and choosing from sets, so I'm not gonna have the complete set. Um, and then overlap, like between pliers, you know, looking at, okay, I've got a cutter here, but I also have kind of a bolt grabbing here. But if I've got another pair of pliers that's a bolt grabbing, is this one a better choice over this one um, because it's lighter weight? I'm weighing the, these tools as well. And there's some big differences. Um, and then like, uh, do I want the release button or not um, on, on the ratchet? You know, I have some decisions to make there. Uh, exactly what extensions do I want? Wobble extensions, etc. So I'm playing around in the car trying to figure it out or the truck. Um, but anyway, then uh, a package arrived. So that's where I'm headed. What is this thing? Uh, this is the Knipex 982402 Phillips screwdriver, or as Knipex like to, likes to call them, uh, a screwdriver for cross reset recessed screws, um, aka a Phillips. So this is my first Knipex screwdriver, and if you followed the channel at all, you know that I've got an interest in different screwdriver handle ergodynamics. So I've laid out a couple of them here. So I've got Klein, Snap-ons, um, Avira, PB Swiss, and now I can add the Knipex to this. And Knipex makes some pretty serious screwdrivers for electricians. Uh, this one's 1,000 volt rated, um, and it has, you can see right there, let's see if I can get that to focus. Um, it has uh, a blade made of chrome uh, vanadium molybdenum steel. I'm not sure what the others um, are all made of. It doesn't look like they've done any, any particular work up at the front, um, such as um, blasting it or carving grooves into it, um, painting it, maybe tempering it, I don't know. Um, so anyway, I thought I'd give this handle a try. What I notice right away, the balance point is, is fairly far back, it seems, for a screwdriver. Um, similar to the Snap-on, I've been using this PB Swiss. This is a really light handle, and I, this so far has moved into my number one spot. I really like the feel of that. This is more of a um, industrial, you know, demolition screwdriver. Um, so it's pretty heavy. There's a lot of meat back here, but I'm trying to figure out why this one's so heavy back here. Um, just heavy plastic, maybe? This is a softer rub rubber overmold, and it has obviously a lanyard hole, which is important if you want to tie this down so it doesn't go sailing off of the project you're working on. They do make a thinner one um, that doesn't have this plastic up here if you need to insert it into a smaller recessed hole. Um, but anyway, uh, I was curious about them. I like the color. I like the bright colors. Easier to find. This particular guy um, is a little asymmetrical. You can see that if I spin that thing. Um, whereas all of these have a greater symmetry to them. I assume it's asymmetrical. Let me get a measuring tape. Maybe it's an optical illusion. Um, interesting. Let's try this. 
So there's that. Yeah. Interesting. So if I go to the thickest part, right there, and turn it, yeah, it is a little asymmetrical. Um, fairly large, too. I don't know if it's uh, bigger than the snap-on. You can see it's close. Um, so it does have some orientation to it. That's kind of interesting. One of the reasons that there's often symmetry is because a uh, screw has no uh, particular place um, that it, this needs to land. It's ra totally random, so there's no reason to have, you know, something um, asymmetrical. Uh, some of the square ones actually have a benefit in that if you need to make adjustments and actually know how much you're turning, well, this is already marked in quarter turns. Um, so if you have a, you know, a carburetor adjustment or something, I'll be doing a video on some carbonate, carburetor tools soon. Um, but anyway, having the ability to know exactly how far you're turning the screw can make a difference. Most of the time we don't care. Um, but anyway, I thought I'd give this Knipex a try and see. And in addition to 10 millimeter wrenches, um, I think I'm going to start acquiring um, number two Phillips screwdrivers as well um, so I can do some comparisons. Uh, this is a pretty good sized hole, so I've wondered, you know, if I could stick something through there. I don't know if any of these, maybe this guy here. Nope. If there's a way to, let me grab something smaller. Use a, um, a kind of a, a rod or something that would allow you to uh, get a greater torque on that. I don't know if these are designed for that. It seems like it's a... It would make sense if you wanted to, to turn that into a T-handle pretty easily um, if you were really fighting with a, um, a pesky screw. But anyway, uh, so there it is, the 982402. Not too bad a price. Um, kind of surprised me, actually, um, when I saw this. Obviously, they go up in price depending on features. Um, the slim one is more expensive, and then the longer ones. This one, I think, is uh, 212 millimeters. Um, it's about something like that. I don't know if they measure how they're measuring them, but overall, um, looks like a solid performer. You know, Knipex makes good tools, so we'll see how this lasts. Um, anyway, and if you have some suggestions, I'm going to be doing a set of videos over the maximum minimalism. Um, so if there are particular tools that absolutely there's no compromise, you know, I'm, I'm debating, do I need shallow, do I need deep, or do I need semi-deep, or do I want to mix them? Are there certain, certain uh, um, bolts or nuts that require shallow or require deep besides spark plugs? Um, and then I could actually mix those in here. Um, otherwise, the default at the moment is probably going to be semi-deeps. Um, and then the next step is I'm going to go out and actually try them on a handful of different fasteners around the vehicle just to see um, if I run into any particular issues. But I'd certainly like to avoid, um, you know, the middleman, you know, if you've already got experience with that. Um, anyway, so let me know uh, both about your experience with Knipex screwdrivers if you got them. And then also the maximum minimalist toolkit for extended overlanding. And with that, dock out.